Hello everyone and welcome to a really exciting video. Today we're gonna do another strategy guide. I'm gonna show you a really cool fast industrial strategy with Hausa. So this strategy is basically just focusing on getting up to that H4 as quickly as possible and just starting to spam really good H4 shipment. And uh, we're gonna start just like normal. We're just gonna gather up that cow. We're gonna build our livestock market kind of safe here in the background. Then we're gonna focus here on getting our grain grain up, of course, and waiting for that 150 wood. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna focus on just getting some nice treasures here. Uh, nothing special. We're up against Brits in this match, and there, this is actually a ranked game. I just feel like ranked game is way better to showcase different strategies because you really get a feel for how they would actually play out if you actually play them on ladder. And I've been doing this strategy quite a bit to try to make it better and perfect it, and it works surprisingly well. And especially against civs that are a bit more boomy, like Brits or India or. Uh, perhaps Sweden or uh, France even, it works really, really well. Now, you don't want to do this against a rush. It will definitely not work against a rush, and it, it, and it will definitely not work against the Spanish FF. But other than that, it's actually a really strong strategy. So we're going to focus a bit here on my perspective this game, I think. And uh, we're going to start here selling that wood, getting that house up, and getting village dogs, dogs out. And that's just going to uh, be the, like the standard start. And... If you want help on getting these first uh, things in order, you can uh, check out my video where I just showcase the basic start that all house strategies start with, so you know what to do with your first villagers. But here, we have selected the deck, and it's called Industrial. You can go ahead and pause the video and copy this deck if you guys wanna. And we have first we're gonna send three villagers and as you can see this deck is just jam-packed with the H4 shipments. We just have so many great shipments here. So we have the 10 villagers and this one's infinite and you can actually think of it a bit actually like uh, building a like sending the factory actually because if sending a factory boosts your economy around 10 wheels. Now, those were, were would be upgraded wheels, but it basically works the same way. You get a really nice economy boost if you want to. And then we have 1600 influence, and this is really what's going to power your H4 once you go up. And we have, of course, the 1000 influence infinite. It's going to be also a really nice card to just spam once you've sent all the other cards. We have the 8 Lufidi. We have the uh, uh, Korofa Confederacy, and this one ships really quickly. So uh, that's really good if you're being pressured, just start, uh, go instantly for the color of a confederacy. Then we have the native treaties, which sends uh, units for every allied tribe. And then we have the canary guards and the gatling camels. Now, these shipments here that cost influence, you can go ahead and pick almost any other shipment you want here that cost the influence. You don't have to go for the canary guard to the gatling camels, they just tend to like them. So we're gonna each up now, and we're gonna each up with the Berbers actually. And this, I think, is one of the reasons why this strategy is so strong because we're gonna have a really good fast, uh, industrial timing, but on top of that, we're gonna have actually quite uh, quite good eco as well. So we're not really sacrificing too much here and I'm just gonna keep gathering quite a bit of food I'm putting a few wheels here on wood uh, Just to get some extra wood and I'm also doing the hardened iron access You always want to do this upgrade as soon as you start chopping wood. It's just gonna help you a lot Meanwhile, I'm just scouting the map trying to take some nice treasures and I almost die versus this treasure card in here So unfortunately, I couldn't really pick up that treasure right away and there we can see his uh his explorer as well so uh, as you can see i've gathered almost 200 wood and i think i'm gonna gather actually up to 200 perhaps even 300 uh let's see yeah i s seem to be stopping there 200 yeah so you basically want to gather that 200 wood and that's gonna allow you to make a university if you sell for a coin so i just sold for coin now and that's gonna allow me to make that university so you basically want to micro for 200 wood 200 coin and you can go ahead and sell one of the cattle to get to it and we have a shipment in and we're actually not gonna go for the house of kingdom uh, and instead we're actually gonna go for the palace of amina and the reason for this is the palace of amina gives us some tokens of influence which is gonna be really nice because we want to make those berbers and we're also gonna need the influence to fast stage later so we're up now and we're immediately gonna send the palace of amina we get our university up and we're gonna get our, our native embassy up. There we go. And I just uh, 
went ahead and started to uh, go, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start training some villagers here and I'm also selling for wood and building another uh, another house actually and also a trading post because this strategy uh, really revolves around getting good shipments in so it's really nice if you can get this trading post even if it means selling a bit more cattle than you like I have a pretty poor uh, cattle economy at this point with only one cattle and uh, but but it's gonna be worth it because we're really gonna need those shipments so at this point you can just go ahead and queue up as many Berber nomads as you possibly can gather up those crates and just Keep training them and get the palace in range of your university. Meanwhile, we're just going to scout our opponent. And I can actually see my opponent's deck at this point. And it's always a good idea when you do this strategy to take a look and try to find out what your opponent's going to do. And this deck is really uh, has a lot of upgrade cards. And yeah, it seems really H3 focused. And there's not a whole lot of unit shipments H2 and not a whole lot of crates H2 either. Also, the fact that he has land grab and medicine really tells me that he's not going to be rushing me. So that tells me that it's completely safe for me to go for this strategy. So you definitely don't want to do this against a rush, as I said. But if your opponent is booming, then you definitely want to do it. So we're going to gather 300 coin and 1,200 food. And then we're going to send that 700 coin. Now at this point, I am overgathering quite a bit. And unfortunately, that's just the way it's going to be, because it depends on how fast you can get in the 700 coin shipment. But it doesn't really matter too much that I overgather, because we're going to need those resources to get up to H4 anyway. So uh, we can now go ahead and gather the coin. And our next card is actually going to be the Akan, I believe, which means we don't want to spend our influence right now on getting the fast stage up. We want to save on the influence because we need to get the Akan in. And, and the Akan are really crucial in this strategy because the Akan shadow takes. So as soon as we hit H4, we're going to have H4 Akans. And now I'm aging up with Songhai. And I think Songhai is just a perf the perfect option when you're doing this kind of strategy because you get that 700 gold and it really just speeds up your H4. So as you can see, it's quite a slow H3. But the surprise is that as soon as we hit H3, we're going to be able to directly go to H4 and do the fast H up as well. And if you know your game knowledge, you know that H4 researches, fa researches faster than H3 as well. So it's going to be like a real surprise for our opponent. Now, because we're going to get that 700 gold on the H up, we actually only need to gather 500 coin at this point. Now I'm over gathering a bit. At this point, you should probably start moving people over to food. Yeah, there we see. I'm starting to put some people over to other resources. And now we're also sending the Akan. And you see, I still don't have a barracks, so it's going to be really tough to defend this if you uh, are up against any kind of pressure. But uh, when you're up against a boomy sieve like Brits and they go full boom, then it's just perfect. And I also went ahead and added this other TP. Now it's really nice to just, if you can afford it, just go for more TPs because that, as I said, that XP is just going to help you immensely. And I also decided to go for the snares. So I sold for wood and got the TP and the snares. Uh, and this is, you can of course do whatever you like and it depends on the map. On this map it was quite good to take the TPs because they're quite easy to defend for me. But if they're hard to defend it might be tougher. And now we're getting the account shipment in. There we have them. So now we can actually use the, if we want to, we can use the accounts to harass our opponent a bit. But it's quite late, so it would be quite daring to actually go in with units. And now we're going to get that war camp up, because now we actually hit H3. We're going to gather up the coin. And as you can see, I have the perfect macro for aging up. So as soon as I'm going to be able to gather up these, uh, I'm not even, I'm just going to train a single villager while I gather these crates. And then, once they're all gathered up, we're going to immediately go to H4. And... I'm also chopping some wood now because I'm going to need some housing once I get up. Uh, because we're going to get a lot of units out. And now for H4, I definitely suggest you go ahead and go with the Yoruba. The Yoruba is going to give you access to the Yoruba units. And those are just really good units because they train super fast. Which is really good if you're being pressured. So if your opponent decides to attack you as soon as you hit H4, they just pop up a ton of uh, Yoruba Lancers, which is great. And we're also going to go ahead and make the faster H up there, you see. 
and we're also gonna save this shipment. So we didn't actually send any shipment to H3. Now, once we've sent all of our H4 shipments, we go, can go ahead and track back and start sending these shipments. Like, this one actually boosts the account, so it's really good. Now our opponent's hitting H3, but I'm already hit, hitting H4, and it's not even 10 minutes, and I'm already up. And immediately, I'm gonna go for the greediest option possible, six, uh, 1,600 of influence. And meanwhile, I'm just starting to train accounts. Because, of course, these accounts are buffed uh, as heck because they're already age 4. So, now I'm starting to get quite confident because my unit, I know my units are really strong. I'm going for the cannons. Now, with this strategy, you really don't have to go for the cannons. If they're good mercs, and especially if you have any me melee cavalry mercs, you definitely want to go for that. Because Akan and melee cavalry is just an insane combination. But on this uh, it's a, a map, I didn't really get any good mercs. So, I thought it would be just be safer to go for the cannons. Now, you see we have... Tons of influence laying here on the floor. So we got a thousand influence from the H up. We got 1600 from that car, which means there's 2600 influence. So we're gonna, if we gather this up, we can even get like a full batch of field guns. And remember, the field guns are also already upgraded. So at this point, we're just building more houses. I have quite a few villagers here on wood because we're gonna need to get in that wood to just keep sustaining production and sending cards. So now you can see I'm uh, trying to get that batch and I'm trying to get the full batch of five cannons and I think I yeah I, I precisely managed to get it so that's perfect so we have five falconets on the field here we have some really buffed accounts here and this is kind of the timing right so we're at uh, 11 minutes 20 seconds and we have a really nice h4 army here and if your opponent isn't ready to counter this uh, it's gonna be a slaughter fest so Next up, we're sending the Lefidi, and this is just to help me with raiding and also with snaring, because if you can snare your opponent, the Akans are just really, really good. And meanwhile, we'll just keep on training the Akans, so we need to split our micro on just food and coin here. We have a few more people on food than coin, so we can just sustain the training. And as soon as uh, this Lefidi shipment hits, I'm actually gonna go for it. So here we got the uh, Lefidi. Now the Lefidis are not actually upgraded. They're still like H2 stats. Or, well, I, I guess you could say like two and a half, uh, H2 and a half, because you actually unlock them in H3, but they do have an upgrade in H3 as well. So, um, and my opponent is just like I suspected making longbows. So even though longbows counter their can, yeah, this is just gonna be a really good trade for me because he really doesn't have any anti-cav and yeah, my units are so strong at this point. 300 hit point, 30 attack with that area of effect. It's just, it's just so good compared to my opponent and yeah. So I'm gonna be able to take out a lot of his army here. He really needs to get some uh, some anti-cav. And at this point, I have so much siege that even though it's Brits, I can definitely just start attacking the houses because you're gonna want that XP so you can just send out more shit. And he has some goons now, but there's just way too few uh, of them. And I'm just gonna be able to actually send even more stuff behind this. And I have a shipment coming in. I'm just trying to keep a few of the accounts close to the cannons in case he tries something and maybe he uses his villagers and does like a villager pull. But I really don't have to be too aggressive because I have so much siege that I can just stand on the cannons and let them do the work. And now we actually have two shipments in and I'm really not paying attention. And this is really the difference between a super high elo player and me. And we see. Our opponent's actually doing a great response here, making some culverins, but we're sending the Kororofa Confederacy to get some Lancers out, and I'm just moving the cannons away and getting free picks on these culverins. Yeah, it's my cavalry just having a field day, and here we see the Kororofa Confederacy coming in as well, so we just got some great backup here, and I'm just uh, d trying to decide what to s uh, send as my next shipment, and at this point, probably go for a thousand influence, or maybe save up for the canoe regards, it's a great option, and yeah, we're just trying to raid, unfortunately, the, the Kororofa Confederacy isn't great at raiding, they have like a really bad multiplier towards wills, but it's still gonna uh, force his units to go into the town center, and yeah, I'm just trying to spread out my army, and just, uh, make chaos in his base and he's trying to remass some bows but yeah there's just way too much cavalry here and he ha does have some goons but they're not gonna be able to save his bows and he's, he's not gonna really have anything to deal with my accounts after that meanwhile we're killing a tc here and a lot of lots of bills and there's a cannon coming in but 
as you can see, my cannons are upgraded and they're just way better than his. And it really makes a huge difference. And now we see the bowman coming in as well. And he manages to get that last cannon out, but I'm already training more cannons and uh, just got another shipment. I th yeah, I sent the thousand influence, so that's gonna be two more cannons as well. So we're gonna have three cannons and. Meanwhile, all of my accounts are sti have still survived and I'm training even more accounts and if I want to at this point, I can just go ahead and send back to back 10 villagers and also get like a huge villager lead. So it's just a really, really strong strategy, especially against an unsuspecting victim. And if your opponent goes too greedy, they're really going to be punished by this strategy. And as you can see, he's trying to hold on, but the damage has been done. And even though both counter account he, he really needs to get like this critical mass and it's gonna be really hard for him at this po stage of the game to get that mass and especially considering his whole economy is actually idle. And we got another cannon coming in here, some more uh, accounts. We're just training so many accounts. Uh, I'm dual raxing accounts at this point and yeah, we're sending a thousand influence again and that's the game. So quite an interesting strategy and as I said, really strong versus sieves that like to chill and just boom and we can actually go ahead and take a look at the post game and as you can see our resources are actually really close now the further this game goes on uh, the better it's gonna look for brits of course because his villager graph is just off the charts here but as you can see this uh, since this attack hits so early you can really punish him before it really starts to pay off with all those villagers and as you can see yeah, even though he has a large army comp, there's just there's such high quality units in my composition that it really just works incredible. So that's kind of how you can utilize the H4. Now we don't have two heavy cannons and we don't have two factories. And on first sight, that makes the H4 seem pretty bad. But I think we do have some a lot of other shipments and the fact that the Falconet's shadow tech at least to some degree kind of makes up for it. Although of course, they're still not as good as a heavy cannon would be. Also, one interesting thing to note, if you have good natives on the map, the native treatise card can actually be quite good. Although, one uh, uh, con with this uh, strategy that I'm uh, doing here, aging up with the Songhai, means that we're actually not going to get as many allies from the age up as we could have. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I think the native treatise card is a decent card. Uh, but it's very situational and on this map it's quite terrible because if I would have went ahead and sent native treaties now I think I would only have gotten uh, some Yoruba units and uh, like a couple of Berber camels and in H4 that's just not a great shipment in that case it would be just way better to send like a thousand influence and just training some Berbers or or sending 1600 of course if you still have it so I hope you found this uh, video interesting and uh, until next time, I'll see you in the next video.